Okay, we're now back. Hopefully we can add a Rita this time because it doesn't want to work. This is the tribe talk. Here she is. This is our tribe talk. We are back after summer, which I hope was good for you all. Depends on which hemisphere you are. Hi. It did not work. It's working now. Yes, it's working now. Hi. Hi. You are. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. You are live from Mumbai. Yes. You are first time. Yes. It's very nice to talk with us. Thank you so much. It's Thank you for having me. I actually cannot hear you anymore. And I'm not sure if anybody else can. You. Oh, but I can't hear you. Um, give me a second. I'll do something. Yeah. <laughs> People are. You can. Okay. Oh. We lost Arita now. Okay. I'm gonna try again. Where is Arita? Technical issues. But we are stronger than that. It does not matter, does it? So in the meantime, guys, I'm gonna just tell you um, until Arita makes her way here. Uh, we are going to talk about the very complex system, Indian system of music. It's, um, it's a millenary uh, system. I'm not sure where she is. Send a request. Okay, let's see. We're going to talk about the very old system, Indian system, of music. Uh, we're going to talk about the ragas specifically because in the West we mistaken them for um, kind of entertainment or religious music when they actually are a combination of seven notes only yet extremely complex following a set of rules and um, which are aiming at healing people, connecting to yourself and connecting to nature. We don't have a Rita, that's right. okay. Here she is, she's back. Can we hear you now? Can you hear me? No. No. Okay. This is strange. Why? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. A bit muffled, but we can hear you. Perfect. Okay. So I was trying to introduce, missed the tech issues. I was trying to introduce our subject today. And I'm <laughs> going to talk about the ragas, which are, despite what the Western world tend to know about, so not just entertainment, it's not religious music, it's much more spiritual than that. And um, it's not working. Oh, Arita. We're having some it's, I guess, like Wi-Fi issues, I'm supposing. Okay, so we lost our Italian, guys. Okay, I'm going to give you some more information about these very famous ragas. Uh, in the meantime, and while I try to reconnect Rita. Um, 
so the raga, the word comes from Sanskrit reg. And reg means very ashes. This is the third time we are trying. Yes, the third time is a good one. I can, can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. So we okay. have something. I was saying like that ragas come from the word rag in Sanskrit. And rag means a bunch of very different things. It means like to color or to dye. Dye, dye in D-Y. Uh, it can mean to colors. It can also mean the feeling of desire, joy, delight. An harmonious note, a melody, and a formula for constructing a specific state of experience. Yes. Yes, you've done your research. You, had, you said it. Man. I had to. It was very simple. Not. It's actually a very complex system. The, from what I understand, the Indian system of music is much more complex than the Western one. To start with, we're going to talk about all of this. We're going to talk about. You're going to explain to us what is really a raga. You're going to explain to us the the whole history of it as well, because it's really anchored into spirituality and this is what I'm most interested in because we titled the talk um, The Music Speaks to the Soul and it's like how the yogi said you are not this mind, you are not this body and so I'm always very interested in any healing modality or yes. protocol to the soul so I so I didn't introduce you. I was waiting for you to be with us. I'm so sorry. Thank no, you for waiting. It's like, you know, I like it. It's the way life is. So you are, and you don't like me to say that, but you really are a Tibetan bowl master. Your music, you're classically trained. You are, you don't want to call yourself a sound healer because you believe that you are more like an instructor. You feel... Yes like a guide um, wants to really share the passion that he has about meditation, breath, and frequency. I think yes. it's on purpose, sound, not music, but frequency is as the creator of all things, really. So I'm going to stop talking now, and I just want to tell us, how did you get into your healing journey and in the passion of music healing. So I'm going to tell you a story in order to explain my journey. I hope you don't mind. I usually use this story to explain my process to everybody and I think it just works perfectly. Yeah. When I was about eight or nine years old, my mother first became a yoga instructor. And when she used to practice her asanas in the house, I used to be very, very interested to go and practice and just do what she was doing, just basically replicate her. And while she was just flowing with ease, I found it very difficult to just so much as stand upright, bend forward and try and touch my toes because I couldn't. I was that stiff. I couldn't touch my toes. And day in and day out, I would see her do these complex uh, postures and workouts. And I used to be like, why can't I even touch my toes? <laughs> so she would bring me and she would tell me, do these kinds of exercises to loosen up your body, which I did. Maybe it worked a centimeter closer to my toes I reached, but, but it didn't work too much. So I used to get very frustrated. I used to be angry all the time. And I would think, why? Why is this not happening? It's so easy. So a couple of years later into the practice, I found out that I'm a very closed off person in general. Just through the way people were talking about me, just through the way I was adjusting to life, I found out that maybe it's not my body that is stiff, but it's my mind that is stiff. And I just need to open it up a little more. So it started out as something very simple like food. I wouldn't eat cheese. So slowly, slowly I told myself, yes, I love cheese. I love cheese and I would start eating cheese. 
so when i go out with my friends and they order pizzas i can eat them and i can be part of their group and very slowly i started reaching an inch closer to my toes later on i started reading books that i otherwise wouldn't i started dressing up in the way i otherwise wouldn't so again i reached a little closer to my toes and in this entire journey i have tried various things various modalities name it acupressure name uh, reiki and yoga breath exercises but the most at uh, the most beneficial to me and the most connection i felt was music because i used to be part of music my entire life since i was 5 years old so i used to do more and more singing more and more practicing and being part of the school choir and i used to feel myself begin to express my emotions i wasn't so stiff anymore because i was able to express myself and slowly 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 12 years later i was able to touch my toes well okay. 12 years later <laughs> That's a very beautiful story. So tell us about the sound now. How do you you have a practice in Mumbai where you use breath work, you use meditation and you use sound. You play the harmonica. Yes. I think I said I'm not sure anymore what I said considering our beginnings. You play the cymbals. Um yes. The words they get bit a lot of instruments. how do you decide and why is it so potent to great uh, down every person every person all of us we use our five senses to connect with the things around us and use those five senses to gather information and then associate them with our emotions for me in my life sound was a very strong sense because through my ears i could connect with the objects around me through the people around me and then in the end obviously i could connect with myself okay. so sound in general has a very important part a role that it plays which is vibration every matter every object in this world vibrates at a certain amount of frequency so when i used sound for my practice I understood how it connected the vibration connected with the cells within me with the being within me the light within me and it just helped me ground myself it just helped me develop myself a little more so I use all kinds of sounds literally if I have to have a I, if I have a bad day the best thing I would like to do is be one with the nature I would love to go to the beach and just listen to the sound of the ocean because it's right there it all began from nature and it's the sound of the ocean which is so vast and so majestic and so grounding at the same time that i automatically connect to it and i feel very very nice and so began my journey in the sound healing process where i understood what sounds can do for me uh playing the guitar helps me just uplift my mood playing the harmonium just brings me in the, in that intense and deep uh surrounding of myself and my emotions i think we all playing the tibetan bowls is healing just natural healing we all Raga Shall we talk about what ragas are? Would you explain? Yes, yes. Of course. Let's do that. Let's do that. So ragas, again I'm going to explain in a very simplistic manner. Um every rag is different. A rag is not just a piece of melody or a scale or a piece of music that somebody has made. It's something very unique. Let's take oh, oh, every human I think people can't hear us. That's strange. Oh, 
They can't hear us. No, I can hear you. You can hear me, but can someone tell us if they can hear us anymore or not? Uh, can you guys hear me? And not a return. Oh, on oh, Tampa, if they don't, they can't hear me apparently. Better. Okay. Okay. Apparently, people hear you, Arita. This is all that matters. I'm supposed to listen. <laughs> no, of course it matters that they can hear you as well. <laughs> but now they can hear you. Okay, great. Okay, they can hear Arita, but not so much me. Okay, now I think they can hear you oh. as well. Yes, in between, your voice did have a little bit of a break, but it's fine. That's weird because I have full connection. Oh, now they can. Okay. I think today is just being surprises. Raga, the suspense. Yes. Terrible now. <laughs> Great, perfect. So, let's so every raga, let's take it as a different human body. How would you make a human body? First, you would have a structure, let's say a skeleton, right? For a human body, for a unique human body, the very first thing you would look at is a skeleton. So the skeleton of a raga is that there are notes. There are seven major notes, which is sa, re, ga, ma, pa, da, ni. And this forms the skeleton of the raga. Now all these seven notes, some of them, five of them have a little sister or a little brother and an elder sister or an elder brother. Now, Sa is a single single child. Re has a little brother. So it makes, it adds one more. Ga has a little sister. Ma has an elder sister. Pa is a single child. Da has a little brother. Ni has a little sister. So now, in all total, we have 12 notes. So this is the skeleton, seven major notes and 12 minor notes. Okay. Now next, what do you do for a human body? You have certain rules, the way the blood and the water flows throughout the body. So that's the same in a raga, the way there is a flow of energy, a flow of vibration. And that is why there is a rule of a rag, of any rag. It's Certain amounts of notes are used when you ascend into your song, into your music and maybe the same or maybe different notes are used when you descend. It may not be the same and that's what's the most unique for a rag. Because if you are raising, if you are ascending from note 1, 3, 7 and 10, the descending may be 10, nine four two there is no match and that's the most beautiful part because there's just a creation of different kind of vibration mm. the very third thing you would see in a in a body in a human body is what's the function how does a body function we need cells we need organs we need something that's working so the same way in a rag, we need something that's working, something that's constantly happening. So one more rule to a rag is that there are certain organs or certain notes that are specific to a particular rag. For example, in rag A, maybe the notes 1, 3 and 5 are definitely used. Yeah. But in a rag B, 1, 3, 5 and seven need to be used okay. and that's what forms the function and the structure that is what a rag feeds off of and lastly what makes us humans it's the connection it's the emotion which means it's the mind so the mind of a rag is that it invokes and creates impressions in not only the listener but also the person who is singing it so when you are singing every different rag, it's going to create a different kind of emotion. Emotion towards another person, emotion towards yourself, towards the time of the day, towards the season it wants to connect with. 
and that is why a rag is different from a scale a melody a piece of music because it has these rules that's what makes it so unique okay. and that's what makes it so connection with the soul and so healing just naturally oh what are like uh the I think when we talked about it the first time you told me there's a rag to bring the rain yes the megara morning there is a rag for joy there is a rag for i mean so is that how the healing happens because you can organize those notes according to their purpose exactly i mean these there are six major rags out of which they have broken down more and more rags and pretty much i think more than 80 ragas exist um at least in the in the hindu classical hindustani classical music so indian music is uh, distributed into two hindustani classical music and carnatic music yeah. i haven't studied or experienced carnatic music myself so i won't be talking about that the hindustani classical music has naturally developed these uh, ragas which have this this emotion of connecting say with the rain or with the fire with the water and if we were to be sensible about it we can use it for our healing in general if you were on a diet you were on a very strict diet would you like to see some nice videos with burgers and pizzas and fries Probably. i don't think so. yeah would you like to hear about other people talking about the different kinds of recipes they have done for healthy eating yeah maybe yes yeah so the same way if we know that we are upset and we are not doing well why not use these ragas that can uplift our mood that's right if we know that we are having some confusion in life some problem why not use ragas that are really going to put us in connection with ourselves talk to ourselves maybe listen to that inner voice in concrete when in your practice uh what kind of you do you tackle with ragas can you like for example anxiety depression or these things like because i went on youtube and i was listening to some ragas by ravi shankar yeah. of course so it, i some of the comments you know and one of the comment was i'm struggling so hard with depression with depression and the, the person was i'm not going to read the whole comment but the person was saying how this music was the only thing was that was helping her and going to life like literally another one was saying this new stick to my soul this is why i thought the title of the book should be the music the song like yes tell me to people with everything that music therapy does if you go in the west it's called music therapy it talks about the state of anxiousness state of depression um state of intense feelings if you're feeling low if you're feeling upset if you have a eating disorder if you have insomnia literally everything basically these are just sound waves coming in the right frequency in the right vibration that you need and it is one of those holistic healing practice that can cure literally everything of course it matters from people to people whether they are open to it whether they can connect to it mm. and whether they actually want to use it for the healing or just for their daily life any any holistic modality will cover almost everything and so when i play because i'm also a sound healer a sound instructor a helper a guide <laughs> i uh, you know we play different sounds we play different frequencies and the uh, Farmer, the player, doesn't know the, what he did to help the player. How the reality is, isn't it? 
you have to play yes. a wide range of high and lows and you have a sense that people need to ground or people need to you know kind of elevate the soul rather than just being oppressed by life or whatever that is so we have a sense by like talking to the patient but here what you seem to be saying is like ragas are actually it's a knowledge of those seven notes organized in a certain way and from thousands of and some people have you know found the key to unlock illness or unlocking that illness those it's always just just it's just like wow you know the, i'm an ayurvedic practitioner i have very often this feeling of how did these people get all this knowledge from where you know that's yes <laughs> that's <laughs> So, so my question to you is like, can you tell us about the history of where these ragas come from and how they are anchored into, into a, a real site? Really? Of course. Um, ragas come from literally where every sound comes from, what we in our practice call the Nada Yoga, which is the divine sound. Now, which has been told to people that it is in the no no oh you're back that there was a divine sound the nada yoga which is the sound of om and from there everything was broken down now the indian scriptures say that one of our gods lord brahma he was the one who created four Vedas, one of which was a Veda of just sounds and music. And it was passed on from God to God. And finally, there was one of the gods who brought it to earth. And from there, we see it in all the scriptures, in the Vedas, in the Upanishads, in the Bhagavad Gita, where they have verses and mantras and shlokas, which are not meant to be just read. They are meant to be sung in a particular note, in a particular form. So that's where I would say the, the spirituality says that the ragas came from because when it was broken down, the word Om from Lord Brahma was broken down and when it was brought to earth, it became multiple sounds. And multiple sounds together became music. And then arrangements of multiple sounds together became ragas. And so that's how it was passed on to us. There have been certain um, excavations in older times during the Indus Valley civilization where they have found uh, paintings. They have not been able to discover what it means, but they found paintings of stick figure with something that looks like two sets of drums or a dholak or a tabla. They have found certain instruments which have been like a long stick with seven holes in it. So it has been assumed that music existed even in that era. In the era of the kings and the emperors before the Britishers came to India, it was music was very, very uh, common and very popular in the Indian cities and in the Indian culture. I think we've that's I think we're very arrogant because truly I think that music must have existed this minute that sound was existing, you know? I mean, there is no reason. You can probably make music with two pieces of stone and a stick. I mean, yes. we always think that we've invented everything. I felt, <laughs> you know? So, yes. Yeah. I read something else because you touched just upon that. And... <clears throat> It says that music is itself a spiritual pursuit that it means to That's beautiful. And I think, like, well, mind you, that's also what yoga is, isn't it? I mean, it's to yoke, to connect. We've, we've used the word connection to nature by you know, talking ragas for the rain, but I'm thinking that if you can talk to nature out there, you talk to your own nature as well, clearly. 
Oh. Yes. Yeah. And, and I guess this is what I wanted to talk about on this talk. It's like those ragas are not just entertaining music or it's not just entertainment or religious or anything like that. It's really, again, that, that talk to the story. It's yes, exactly. Sorry, lost you there. I didn't get the last um, sentence. More about the spirituality of it. Yes, um, there literally isn't much that's been written about it. It's it's as basic as it gets. But uh, like I said, the sound, which was the universal sound when it broke down. It's our way of connecting to the higher sound. Sometimes it says just how we would assume you wouldn't be a chef just the day you decided you want to be a chef. First, you will learn how to probably wash your vegetables, learn how to hold your knife right, learn how to cut your vegetables, cook them right. And then after a couple of months or years, you would call yourself a chef. Yeah. So the spirituality of sounds in general and ragas in general is that these are arrangements of different vibration together sing them listen to them clean your mind connect with yourself and maybe be ready for the next step whatever that may be and then be ready for the next step even more and the final step is connecting with the highest sound or connecting with the divine itself yeah. So ragas are a way, just like any other modality, to reach your next step. Mm. But it's a beautiful way, and it's something I am very, very thrilled to have in my life. Yeah. It's like in the you have a natural existence. Artists don't invent them; they only discover them. Music appeals to human being according to Hinduism because there are hidden harmonies of the ultimate creation. As if everything was already there. Everything is already around us and in us. And we just have to discover it. Yes. I think that's very true and what a beautiful sentence. <laughs> it's a really beautiful sentence. <laughs> Um, would you tell us, like, for those who are listening, like, what would you advise for someone, for example, with depression? I mean, there are a lot of people with depression right now. There was always, but I think the last two years have precipitated a lot of people into a state of... And I want to say... What would you prescribe kind of thing? I mean, beyond the fact that they could, I should say that they could uh, send you a personal message on Instagram here because you do questions uh, where, which involve uh, breath, meditation, and music. And we do yes. one-on-one, -on -one, right? We can talk about that. One-on-one, yes. So, on one, yes. So they would get you and make an appointment and then you can have an online session that I works yes yes usually they tell me what they are looking for and um, if somebody was to tell me they want to learn how to breathe right because a lot of people don't know how we breathe and how exactly we should breathe there are a lot of different exercises muscle breathing exercises cleaning exercises meditative breathing that I can do within five or six sessions okay. in the same way if they want to learn mantra chanting, then it would take me five or six sessions to help them learn a couple of two or three mantras, their meaning, how to chant them, how to be very particular about the kind of uh, dialect you're using, the accents. Yes. So everything. The, the journey literally begins with what the person wants. So if and that wants to, if that person was, for example, suffering from depression? I would suggest, since we are talking about ragas, I would genuinely suggest some kind of chanting sounds and ragas. Because the human voice and our own voice has so much power 
it's just something that has been not been talked about much and you understand it only through experience i would really recommend slow breath practices and chanting sounds syllables to begin with and then slowly slowly move on the practice to multi multiple sounds at a time and then maybe even take a dive into the raga world mm. you know last night i had an insomnia i couldn't sleep i must have been so stressed about this talk no i'm kidding but <laughs> for some reason i'm anxious i'm not sure about what and i what i do now is that i sing home yes um, in three syllables and i do that probably about 15 20 times and i just go sleep like a baby and i i learn that from learning sanskrit or at least studying sanskrit and um, and the power of this vibration is just uh, it's amazing we don't know it i mean uh, in the west anyway nobody they think that you are woo woo and crazy but it's just the calm it brings out just by sending <laughs> three vowels right it's just naturally therapeutic i read that actually the voice is actually for the human for human beings the voice is the most healing of all the instruments yes because it's we are literally creating vibration while we speak yes and if you're breathing right and if you learn how to sing a verse you will know how to breathe even better then you're just creating and building just a different kind of vibration that you most need that is definitely healing so you can feel like okay so someone suffering again from depression uh would you would uh, teach them how to breathe first and then get yes to start um vocalizing on vowels yes. and then to mantras or maybe mantras maybe just some ragas to begin with i think step by step the rag would be the next step the rag. and eventually yes even mantras mantras are also very powerful and uh, very healing by itself but because i think sometimes it could be the fourth or the fifth step yeah. so i would bring breath chanting of syllables or just humming first then chanting of syllables chanting more than a syllable maybe just a practice on the harmonium and me just different kinds of notes together ragas and then mantras yes the mantras are at the end because it's very difficult to pronounce properly isn't it and to breathe correctly while you sing them yes yes at, at least for people who haven't uh, been born and raised to say them yes uh would you give us some example of course that's what i'm here for oh look who's uh nat has joined us hi nat Nat is uh, one of our friends and also um, a sound therapist. And Nat part of the Tri Talk because she did one with me on sound healing back in May or June actually, I believe. So yes, and I love that talk. Whoever has joined now is just on time. I would like Arita to give us a bit of a demonstration of instilling that feeling in us or the way raga do. and I think you were you wanted to show us two ragas right two yeah so i'm going to show you two very sing two very different rags i'm not going to tell you what they mean or what impression it has to create on you i'm pretty sure you'll feel it yourself and we can talk about it after i do okay so i'm going to first apologize that i don't have my harmonium is going to have to go to the repair shop ah. and so i have the keyboard here right here please bear with it uh, yeah. um i will ask everybody who has just joined please close your eyes 
just feel these two different rags first i'll sing one maybe take a 10 to 15 second break and sing the next one enjoy second one I'm going to leave it to you to, yeah, to tell me how. Uh, whoever is yeah. listening, I would like to. I can't hear you. You can't hear me? Oh, I hope. Okay, now I can hear you. Okay. I'm just, uh, whoever is, uh, who has just listened to this, if they want to drop a comment on what the first one did to them, what the second one did to them. That would be nice. That would be interesting. Uh, for me, the first one felt... felt yeah. Yes, indeed. Thank you. <laughs> yes, that's right. Thank it, you. It is beautiful. You have a gorgeous voice. Very beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. As do you. Not many people know that. Sorry? As do you, you have a lovely voice as well, and not many people know that. Oh, yeah. That's all I can do. I, I can't. Not yeah, that that's my favorite. Harmonious. I don't know. The first one felt like there was something extremely beautiful, but also extremely nostalgic. A form of acceptance, as in things have happened the way they have, and I'm accepting it. But there's a, a sadness. Roman is saying the first one felt deep in the body, amazing. Yeah. The second one was very joyful, wasn't it? Yes. This, yes, me too. I would like to experience this often. That's true. It's a blessing. Maybe we should sing ragas, or you should sing ragas more often for us live. Roman says the second one was lighter, happier. 
Yes. I felt myself, I say, to, I, I felt exactly that the lightness Roman is talking about here. I, I felt a lightness in my head. Things were going up. Not, oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Um, something was coming. And the other one is like, the first one was so nostalgic and there was an heaviness to it, but, but a, a beautiful heaviness. Like something, yeah, something where you're forced to accept. Exactly, exactly. That's literally the characteristic of each one of them. The first one, because it's so deep and so intense, you wouldn't think you want to hear this when you're sitting with your friends after work and just having a chat. Maybe not. So the very characteristic of this rag says that it's a morning rag which means it's supposed to be sung between 6 and 9 a.m. when you wake up, when you're in an intense mood, when you're just thinking about life, thinking about where you want to go, connecting with the nature and with yourself. Mm. And it's very masculine in nature, this yeah. rag. It's called Rag Bhairav. And it's very, very intense for a lot of people, yes. It is. And the second one, quite the opposite. It's called rag of Vrindavani Sarang and it's feminine in nature. It's a rag which is slightly romantic, a little bit fun, uh, chirpy even. Yeah. And it's supposed to be sung in the evening or in the late afternoon between 5 and 6 p.m. And you could just, you can actually picture yourself to have the second raga in the evening because that's how uh, uplifting it feels. Mm. But not maybe not have it in the morning. Yeah. So these rags come with rules and characteristics that sing this in the morning for the best effect because they are vibrationally meant to create that kind of energy within you. And you sing this one in the evening because you're going to connect with the nature, with yourself, the best possible way in the evening. And it's all there. We just have to apply it. We just have to practice it. Yeah. And what it helps us. Is to have. That's just a gift to humanity, really. And I know that's your, that's your intention. When I was trying yeah. to, to extract, literally extract from you, <laughs> what I said, Arita, Arita, how do I call you? What are your titles? And she's like frowning. You're like, mm, no, don't want to talk about titles. And you said the only thing is that I, I love this practice and I want to share it with the world. Yes, that's absolutely. What... It's very, very dear to me. Yeah, so the music that speaks to my soul, basically, that's what it was. Thank you for this. Yes. Um, Arita, it's almost the end of this talk. They are supposed to be 45 minutes, but they never are really. I just want to remind people that we can find you on Facebook at on a Healing Note, on Instagram, obviously here at Arita Later. How do you pronounce your name in Indian? Not in Arita Thakur. Thakur, much easier for me. French, you know, the like Thakur. Thakur. I love it. I prefer... The French accent is fine for me. Good. The Indian accent is fine for me. <laughs> <laughs> we all are like we understand each other um, I want to thank you for everything I just want to so it's not like I'm, I'm just sizing again that if people um, are interested they should uh, send you a private message I think yes, I'm going to do this myself because it's just very beautiful we've just I hope so. I'm sure the people listening agree, agree with me. We would like to listen to this more often. I think you should come on Instagram and sing to us on a regular basis. I'm not saying every week, but whenever you feel like, just to okay. sing. And because it brings so much joy um, and, and balance, and we need that in this world today. I, I just wanted to say that, that during this talk, I find it quite funny, actually, that we were talking about sound and harmony, and we could hear 
the madness of Mumbai outside. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The cars and the honking and the, the madness of the, oh, wondrous sound is here. Rachel. Rachel is here. Nice to have you, Rachel. Rachel, we did a talk about becoming um, your true self. Or in you. uh, thank you, Brenda. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Arita, thank you so much. I thank you. Hope that we will do more together and we'll have more talks yes. and more ragas coming our our way. Um, I will think about something else we can do together because this is truly really beautiful. Most definitely. And, and I just want to say thank you for creating this platform where you're bringing us all together and just spreading so much warmth and joy and the knowledge at the same time. I think it's really, really commendable. And thank you for that. Well, I'm glad you appreciate. I'm glad to do it. I hope you will grow. The intention, the intention is to provide people, especially when they are helpless and facing illness, to find uh, other ways, the ways of the soul, to heal themselves. Because in my daily in Ayurveda, uh, I have never healed someone who did not have an emotional issue. What I'm trying to say is that they came for their stomach, they came for their back, they came for their womb, they came for anything physical seemingly. And every time it was the soul that needed healing. Yes. And so yes. all these practices which are you know, allowing us to reconnect. They all come from India. I mean, you should be proud of your heritage because it's just, it's so huge and marvelous. And I am, I just would like to have five lives to keep on learning, really. Yes, so, exactly. Yeah, Arita, thank you so much. Let thank you. And again. Uh, people, I think, know how to find you. I will post your contacts down on this uh, post after I post the video. And coming up on the next talk, very interesting, I think, next week, we are talking about uh, eating disorders with Berenice Smiles. And we're talking specifically about um, anorexia and bulimia. And if you know people who suffer from it, it's also a condition that's very miserable and helpless. And people often feel that they will never heal from it. And so I'm going to interview Berenice who healed from it and is a wow. yoga practitioner. And she will explain to us how to, we can help through the prism of Ayurveda as well. So I think that's going to be interesting. That's lovely. That's yeah. lovely. Hopefully. Lots of love, my dear. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Welcome to the tribe, to all of you who were today here. And it was beautiful. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Thank you. Bye, babe. Bye.